Good morning, my loves. I miss you all so dearly. Hope you are continuing to stay safe and stay healthy. We are back for another ELA lesson. Today, the focus of our lesson is a couple different things. Um, what we've already been learning about, and we're going to continue to build upon that today, is we have been comparing and contrasting two different texts that are about the same topic, but are written from different point of views. And we've been doing that using different versions of different fairy tales, right? We looked at different versions of the Three Little Pigs. We've also looked at different versions of Cinderella. All right, so today we're going to take another look at two different versions of a fairy tale. Also in fairy tales, what we've been talking about is the moral or the theme of the story. Yesterday, a lesson was posted for you about how, um, excuse me, lost my train of thought. Yesterday, a lesson was posted for you about uh, figurative language as well as how to find the theme of a story and what are the rules when we are stating the theme of our story. Um, so that was posted yesterday. So we're going to build upon that knowledge today. And I'm going to read two texts to you. And then at the end of this, you're going to have an assignment that requires you to work with the figurative language, as well as to come up and identify the theme or the moral of one of the two stories. All right. So at the end of this, you'll be able to find the theme of a story and you will be able to identify figurative language. All right. So yesterday there was also a video posted about different types of figurative language. We reviewed three of them to start off with simile, metaphor and onomatopoeia. So while I'm reading both books, I want you to listen out for any figurative language that you hear and just jot those down. All right. While I'm reading. All right. So the first book that we're going to read is called Goldilocks and Just One Bear. So this is definitely a different interpretation of the original fairy tale, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. So let's see what happens in this one. Goldilocks and Just One Bear by Lee Hodgkinson. Once upon a time, there was this bear. One minute he was strolling in the woods, all happy-go-lucky. The next minute, he didn't have a crumb of a clue where he was. He was one completely lost bear. The bear didn't much like this place. Too many bright lights and not enough twigs. Too much loud honking and beeping and not nearly enough owl hooting. The bear was also a teeny bit scared and his furry legs were slightly wobbly. Maybe the thing to do, said the bear, looking around, is to pop into Snooty Towers and get away from this terrible racket. But the revolving door at Snooty Towers made the bear dizzy, and being dizzy with wobbly legs was bad news. What the bear needed was a little rest. A little rest somewhere would definitely make things right. I love the different graphics. Very colorful. The bear peeked through a door and thought how very pleasant it was up here. Not nasty and not see like down there, said the bear. Just the place for a little rest. All that whooshy traveling was certainly a hungry business. So before his little rest, a little porridge seemed like a good idea. porridge is too soggy. This porridge is too crunchy. This porridge is a bit on the dry side, but it is better than nothing. Now the bear was ready for his little rest. Do you notice that this, the wet porridge was fish tank? Looks like goldfish. Some toast. This chair is too ouchy. This chair is too noisy. This chair is just right. A little rest is nice, but what the bear needed to really feel like himself again was a good old fashioned nap in a comfy bed. 
You guys want to sit on a chair like that? <laughs> This bed is too frothy. This bed is too pink. This bed is just right. And soon he nodded off. The bear dreamed of crunching through leaves. The bear dreamed of puttering around in his slippers. The bear dreamed of a voice shouting very, very loudly. Somebody has been eating from my fistful, said the mommy person. Somebody has been eating my dear little pumpkin's kitty nibbles, said the daddy person. And somebody's been eating my toast, said the little person. And they've eaten it all up. Unfortunately, the bear was not dreaming at all. He was wide awake and back in real life again. Somebody has squished my cactus, said the daddy person. Somebody has upset my dear little pumpkin, said the mommy person. And somebody has popped my beanbag chair, said the little person. Somebody's been sleeping in my bath, said the daddy person. Somebody has been sleeping in my bed, said the mommy person. Shh, whispered the little person. I think that somebody is sleeping in my bed right now. The bear peeked from under the covers to see a daddy person, a mommy person, and a little person standing right there. The bear thought that the mommy person looked ever so slightly familiar. And the mommy person thought that gobbling other people's breakfast, breaking other people's stuff, and snoozing in other people's beds, seemed ever so slightly familiar to, and it was. Oh, I see where this is going. Baby bear, said the mommy person. Goldilocks, said the bear. Reunited and it feels so good. They hadn't seen each other in ages. Porridge, said Goldilocks. The bear nodded. So Goldilocks cooked up a big bowl and plunked it in front of him. It was not too hot. It was not too cold. It was just right. It made the bear almost forget about that once upon a time when Goldilocks had behaved so badly. This little bear would never dream of doing anything like that. Aha, but you did. <laughs> And although it had been good to see Goldilocks living so happily ever after with those charming people, the bear decided it was time to go back home to the woods. And he lived happily ever after. All right, so that was Goldilocks and Just One Bear, a very different take on it. Definitely some similarities from the original fairy tale, but there definitely were a lot of differences, even just slight differences in the what the porridge actually was and what the chairs were and what the beds were. Those were all little tiny differences in the story, but differences nonetheless. And there was tons of figurative language in that book. So hopefully you were paying attention and you picked some up. All right, so now we're going to move on to another version of Goldilocks. This one is an animal version. So if you remember about our definitions, this kind of would be a little bit closer to a fable because remember our fables those are the fairy tales but it's usually when it's all animals they have the speaking parts the animals are the characters like charlotte's webs things like that movies like that all right so today or next we're gonna read goldilocks and the three bass 
This was written by, oops, I can't see the name. It's covered up. Erica S. Pearl and illustrated by author Arthur Howard. Wouldn't that be cool if the author's name was Arthur? Arthur Arthur. Anyways, you guys know I'm silly. Into the text. Once upon a time, there was a kid named Goldilocks. She lived down the road from a family of bears. When the bears went out for a walk one morning, well, you can probably guess what Goldilocks did. Inside the bear's house, Goldilocks found three bowls of porridge. She tasted the big bowl, but it was too hot. She tasted the medium bowl, but it was too cold. Then she tasted the little bowl. Mm -hmm. It was just right. So... She ate it! The little spoon, too. <laughs> Next, Goatilocks found three chairs. She tried the big chair, but it was too hard. She tried the medium chair, but it was too soft. Then she tried the little chair. <laughs> it was just right. So... She ate it, cushions and all. I thought she was going to sit in it. <laughs> but this is Goatilocks, so. At this point, Goatilocks began to feel sleepy. Upstairs, she found three beds. She tested the big bed, but it was too lumpy. I agree. She tested the medium bed, but it was too squishy. Then she tested the little bed. Ah, it's just right. So, what do we think she did? She ate it, plus the blanket, two pillows, and a pair of pajamas. Then, with a contented sigh, Goatilocks fell fast asleep. Shortly thereafter, the bears came home. You can probably imagine the commotion. Someone's been eating my porridge, said Papa Bear. Ah, oh, and someone has been eating my porridge, said Mama Bear. Hey, where's my porridge? asked Baby Bear. Get a hold of this, called Papa Bear from the dining room. Someone's been sitting in my chair. Ah, gracious, said Mama Bear. Someone has been sitting in my chair. Hey, where's my chair? Asked Baby Bear. They found the culprit upstairs. My bed, wailed Baby Bear. It's... Gone! Goldilocks opened her eyes. Above her stood three bears. Uh -oh. Quickly, she jumped up and hoofed it for home, which probably sounds like the end of the story. But... Dun, dun, dun! The next day, Goldilocks woke up feeling a little, well, sheepish. She wanted to make things right with her neighbors. But how? Outside, she found her answer. How could the bears resist? Her gift was so pretty, so thoughtful. It was just right. So... Uh-oh. They ate it! Burp.
and they all lived happily ever after. All right, so there was another perspective or version of Goldilocks and the Three Bears, but this one was Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Definitely some similarities, not just with the original fairy tale, but also some similarities, excuse me, with the other version we read, Goldilocks and Just One Bear. All right, but both of these were different versions. Both of them had different examples of figurative language in them. So now let's talk assignment. What you're gonna do for your assignment is you are you are in your bag that you picked up, um, what was that, on March 16th, the academic bag, you or your parent came to pick up for you or the family member, I know a couple aunts came, a couple grandparents, but in that bag was this sheet right here. And it says, I can identify the moral of the story. So here you're gonna put your name, of course, on top, and you're gonna pick one story. You're either gonna do Goldilocks and Just One Bear, or you're going to do Goldilocks, and the three bears, or if you're a go above and beyond scholar, you can do it for both, all right? Maybe there's some extra credit in there for you, all right? So you are going to fill out this form. This form wants you to first write the moral of the story. What was the lesson, depending on which book you read, or I read both, so you didn't read either, depending on which book you pick, what was the moral of that story? What was the lesson? What was the lesson that the author wanted you to get from that story? All right, then you're going to write down three pieces of textual evidence. You are going to take three details from the story and you are going to support your moral with those details. So for example, if I was doing Little Red Riding Hood and I said the moral of the th story was be careful not to talk to strangers because that's very dangerous. Some of the evidence that I would use from the story would be she was in the woods by herself and she told a strange animal or a talking wolf where she was going to be. Her mother had warned her not to talk to strangers when she was en route to her grandmother's house. And then when she got to her grandmother's house, the wolf that she told where her grandmother was and where she was going had eaten up her grandmother and it ate her. Thankfully, the... um. The woodsman was in the woods with the ax and he was able to save them. So those were three details from the text that supported the moral of don't talk to strangers because that is dangerous. Then you are going to say, this is the moral because... And you're going to now take that evidence and you're going to put it in sentence form. You're going to make a scholarly paragraph or eh, yeah, three to four sentences, so almost a whole paragraph, you're going to write some scholarly sentences, remembering what good writers do, punctuation, grammar, etc. And you're going to now verbalize in sentence form what the moral is because of the evidence. So you're just taking the evidence and putting it in sentence form in that last box at the bottom. All right. So that is part one of the assignment. Part two of the assignment is remember I told you to make sure that you were paying attention to any types of figurative language, specifically similes, metaphors, and onomatopoeia. And there was plenty examples of one more than the other two, but still examples nonetheless. All right, so I need you then on the back of this sheet, or if you have space and don't go out of the box, you can do it on the bottom of the sheet in that empty space at the bottom. And what you're going to do is you are going to give me five examples of figurative language from the text. Then you're going to tell me how did that figurative language benefit the story? Remember yesterday in the video, in the video lesson that I sent to you, I told you and discussed with you about how figurative language amplifies our writing. It beefs it up. It makes it more creative and more interesting and, and more, um, engaging for the reader. So tell me how did that figurative language benefit the story. And yes, you, I mean, no, you cannot come back and just say, oh, it engaged the reader. How did it engage the reader? What did it do? Did it help you visualize it? Did it bring it to life? I want you to give me five examples of figurative language from these two texts. All right. So all five can come from here. All five can come from here. You can do three and two, two and three, four and one, one and four, whatever you would like to do, but a combined of five examples of figurative language. So tell me what was the figurative language, meaning was it a simile, a metaphor, or was it onomatopoeia? Tell me what was the 
figure of language. So if it was a simile or metaphor, what was the comparison? If it was onomatopoeia, what was the, the word that brought to, uh, that was brought to life? And then you are going to tell me how it benefits. So I should see three things. Type of figurative language, what it was, the example from the text, and then how did it benefit the story? How did it help the reader? All right. Well, that's it for today, my loves. Go ahead and get started on this assignment. I love all of you and I miss you so, 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 so dearly. And I cannot wait to see you guys all again. I love you. Stay safe and stay healthy.